So, uh, that's probably enough prelude. What we're going to do is take the artifacts you have in front of you, which represent, I downloaded out of things this morning. These are actual live project tutorials, documentation, meeting log, chat log. And what we're going to do is something like that. Uh, we're going to take them and we're going to scribble out over them everything that is confusing or terrible or, or helpful and see how we can actually turn that into the kind of annotated artifact you might use in a classroom. Uh, just like, you know, the Chinese poem translation has English and maybe a few cultural notes there. Uh, some of the kinds of artifacts you might have in your packet, you may have meeting logs, uh, long and short versions. You may have SOPs, which stand for Standard Operating Procedures. They're basically how-to documentation communities use to do things. And you may have tickets, which are, uh, ticket trackers are basically giant shared to-do lists, and individual tickets are tasked within those trackers, and they represent a unit of work that needs to be done. And we will be annotating them with these four things. If you find something that makes your artifact easy for a new person to understand, put a smiley face sticker on it, pretend you're a teacher, be a very hard grader. And if you find something that makes it harder to understand, scribble all over it in red, write why it's confusing or what you got stuck on, you didn't explain this word, uh, this is confusing terminology, it should actually be converted to that. Um, highlighter. In your brochure thing, on the left side, there's a list of open source cultural principles, and in the middle, there's a list of open source practices. Now, how many people here are contributors to an open source project of some sort? Okay, we have a few, and they are clustered in the back. Um, <laughs> could we, uh, okay, could we, could we have some of the experienced contributors in the back uh, swap out with someone from the team that don't have any? so that we have a bit of a mix. And those people who are experienced contributors can maybe explain some more of these terms to the others in the group if need be. So highlighters are, classes always have so by learning objectives, con concepts they're trying to teach, object-oriented programming, database design, uh, fits la, hicks la, whatever. And so what we're gonna try to do is, Pick uh, two or three principles or practices in your team and see if you can find examples of the uses and of artifacts you're holding. Not all packets have all of the principles on them, so you may have to you know, pick one and if you can't find it, try another. And blue is for whatever else you want to put on. So this was a giant file host of information. I promise it will all make sense at the end when we'll come back together and explain what it is we've just done. What you're getting is a simulation of the kinds of things we put both the professors in our workshop through and once they go back to their schools, their students through. And so as an example, I want to call up Kevin who did this this morning and he's going to show you exactly what he did so you can do the same thing. All right, can you hear me? Cool. All right. In a nutshell, um, I was asked to help out with um, you know, making the documentation better. How do we actually make these things pretty and understandable and all that? And I was dropped down first with this blog post. And First things, that I started pulling out information, where are the links, what do things lead to, and I eventually found the, um, there it is, the ticket itself, which is where we go to report all of the bugs that we find, anything that we find that we don't like, or features that we want to request, or anything along those lines. This is the interface that Fedora has set up to actually handle getting this information to the developers themselves. And I sat down and read through the specific ticket that was brought up for um, 
this conference in a prior conference, actually. And um, they set up this ticket, and I'm going to stand here and respond to the layout of their tracking software, their bug tracking software itself. I found it to be mildly unintuitive uh, on first blush, and because this is what you see initially. First thing you have to know how to do is you have to be signed in up here. Well, the sign in is tiny, and it's smaller in font than almost every other font on there. So for anybody who's a little bit older, it's harder to see. For anybody who isn't familiar enough with PCs to be able to scan very, very quickly and know that, okay, in general, the logins are going to be up on top somewhere, um, they're probably not going to see it that fast. So that's my first gripe. The second one, oops. Sorry, new PC, getting used to it. The second one was actually the style layout down here. Um, because this is the main problem and I'm going to respond to it. Uh, or I would be, if you were actually just making one initially, it would start here and this is what it would look like. Uh, well, this is kind of backwards to me. Uh, usually what you end up seeing is this is all of the information right here that classifies it. Where is it going? Who are we talking to? What are we talking about? Um, the, the actual gross classifications. Uh, that's usually on top because that's generally where you want your information first. Uh, this is where you're saying, okay, here's who needs to listen. Uh, the next step is actually describing the problem itself, which is right here. Okay, well, that's put second. So actually, that's kind of in a good spot. Um, not too wretched. However, the first step up here is what I think of as the last one. This is the problem area that you put in here. However, here is where you attach the proof. This is all of your screenshots. This is all of your write-ups, all of the anything that you want to attach to show. Um, here's my notes on the subject. You attach as, you know, attachments like in an email. And it's at the top. Okay, that, that seems kind of backwards to me. So I was going to go through and suggest, not that, uh, suggest, let's see. One login font needs to be visible and prominent. And yeah, I know I'm spelling, I'm just typing quickly. And um, two. Headed is last and needs to be first, while the um, attachments be at the end for um, I guess workflow. And to be honest, yeah, I really, really, really need to clean up the way this sounds so, because you are actually talking to developers who need to be able to see this logically. So yeah, this is just my first, let's just get the ideas out before I forget them. Um, awesome, rough drafts are cool. I would really not want to hit send right now. Yes, you want to go back, you want to fix all of those little red underlying squiggles, and you actually would probably really want to attach a couple of pictures that we've annotated um, saying here, put this here, make this one bigger. Um, 
expand out a little bit. You might want to center stuff just a little bit to make it a little more visible, you know, make it pretty. Um, and um, let's see. So after going through all of this and... Uh, yeah, sure, what's up? Okay, the attached file here? Yeah, I mean, you, you said something about that's where the proof goes. Now, where is the information that says that's, that's, that's about attaching the proof? Right, well, um, again, that's one of those things that they're assuming that that's what you know. You know, these are your attachments, I guess. Basically, it's the show me the bug section, and yeah, it, it doesn't say that. Uh, that would be another very valid point to put on a bug tracker to say, hey, here's another bug. There isn't any way to show that you know, the attachments are anything at all. What are the attachments for? Yeah, that I sort of thing. I say that because if it was me, I would, I would be attaching what, what you were typing in. Yeah, um, exactly. And most people, that's what, you'd, uh, that's what somebody would just assume. The, um, the next step is that they have a wiki set up that has answers. Here's all of the um, methodology, all of our answers uh, that um, I was shown and found through the um, blog post. Um, let's see, and I don't want to eat up all the time either because I will get verbose very quickly. And um, let's see, we had also talked about uh, new, uh, the image manipulation program, GIMP. Um, and the first thing that I said that uh, most people I keep hearing about complained about and you know, it's just generally weird in GIMP is that when you first start it up, it's three panes and you can see your background behind it and it just looks weird. Uh, beyond any shadow of a doubt, it just looks strange in three panels. Well, fortunately in the new release, they are actually going to fix that. Um, that is going away. Um, and let's see. Yes. And oh, I'm trying to remember everything. Okay. And um, let's see. Actually, I'm starting to run out of things that I remember from. That, I, that's great. Okay, awesome. Yeah. So, Yep. Thank you, Kevin. There you go. And we can now give him a round of applause. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, let me get this back on. A couple of things you might have noticed about the things that Kevin pointed out. The first one is that he didn't actually, we spent a little over half an hour on this, and he didn't actually get anywhere near doing the task that he initially tried setting out to do because all these little annoyances, all these little things started popping up in his way. And what Kevin probably found there was better things for him to fix. But the rearranging of the order of the ticket tracker, that's something as an experienced contributor I would never think about, but now there's something that is it's a very valid point that some of the interface is confusing.